I'm loving the external cables. Guys, five tricks and zero dollars or zero cents you're gonna spend for this enhan enhancements. This is the, vib the Vibrex type. Uh, if you also have the caliper type of the brakes on your road bike, fitness hybrid bike, uh, you will be able to use all five uh, tricks. This is $300 bike, but still the brakes should stop you and should be safe. There is the test, how to perform the braking test uh, video in the, in the description. Just, just click the link and do the test if you need. And after implementing those five tricks, you will do the test again and see the difference between braking power before and after. Okie dokie. The trick number one, check out your cable routing and the length of your housings. This is the housing for your braking cable. The cable is right here. What you want to check, especially on the budget bike, is that you squeeze the braking lever just while you were braking and see the movement on the housing. If the housing moves a lot, that means you don't have the optimum uh, length of the housing or the cable routing uh, is not uh, well done. Mini. This cable, as you can see, has nice uh, curve here. It might be a little, a little bit uh, shorter in my opinion but it's quite okay as you can see while while I'm pushing the brake it doesn't move that much but it would it would move a little bit less if it was maybe one centimeter shorter but also sometimes this housing would be routed like um, under this housing and then it would bend too much and you would even feel uh, more friction so you want to have nice nice curve for your housing the housing shouldn't be too long and this is still okay but it shouldn't move that much on some bikes especially budget bikes while braking it would move like this meaning you're you're losing a lot of braking uh, power and then you just remove the cable shorten the uh, the housing and then you're done then you feel more braking power let's see the real one Okay, let's break now. This um, part of the housing will move along with one of the arms of your V-brakes arms. So that's pretty normal. But I would still want to have this one a little bit shorter because we have this, this ending for the, for the housing. It might be shorter. It doesn't mean that you want to have um, very long curves on your brakes, on your housing. It's better to have it just in one place like this because then the cable will, will only touch the housing right here. If it's a very long one and smooth one like here, then there will be lots of friction between the cable and the housing and that's where we lose braking power. So this one, in my opinion, should also be shorter. I'm also showing you that on some other episode it's also in the in the description but make sure that your housings don't move that much during applying some force with your fingers on the braking lever so just remove the cable and cut the housing bit by bit remember don't cut the housing if the cable is inside and then mount the cable once again and see whether it gets less spongy it doesn't move that much and that's where you gain braking power the trick number two cleaning the cable and applying some loop to it if you are breaking and you feel kind of like feeling uh, under your fingers that means that the cable isn't clean anymore and if you left your bike a couple of times after cleaning with the water or, or after rain without drying out and the water gets to the housing the cable which is made of steel will get rusty and when the rust is inside that's you that's where you lose 90% of the braking power and what you can do here is this is the external cable, cable routing is that what I normally do 
I will first clean the cable that is on the outer side just not to take in any dirt and, and mud in, into the, the housing. Then you can open your brake like this. Then you can simply remove the housing from the guide here and you can move it around. And so when you move it right there, you will see this part of the cable. What I'm doing with it is that I will clean it. And then guys, just, just a little bit of loop, not much, can you see this? Not much loop, just a little bit so that you can feel those those cheaper cables are not that that high quality uh, with, with and they have no coating so i'm just putting a little bit of oil in between my my fingers here applying it and maybe i will even decide to take a rag and take it off Maybe not completely, I'm not squeezing it, but just a little bit, so that I will feel nice movement right now. Same on, the, on this side, open the housing, boom. Now we can move it around and I, I can see now more cable here. I will clean it and now we can see. And then I will put here just a little bit of loop, not much, like this, okay? So that just, just for the housing to, to have less friction, should be a little bit more smooth then. And then you can check the difference uh, right away. Put the housing back, close your your know, wheel brakes. Boom, like this, and then squeeze the brake. And you can feel that it's working better. Of course, uh, you will feel less difference uh, when the cable are new, like here. So maybe it's not even, there is no need to do this. But if there is some dirt inside, they are, they are just older and dry, this is a very good idea to do it. Yeah! All the mega! No, 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 I have it, I have it, but all the The trick number three, we have clean um, housings, clean cables, we have the right length of the housing, which is good, and now the pivot might be the next place or area where we lose braking power. So once again, I'm going to open the brakes like this on both sides and then you can simply maybe you even hear there is a friction there and this bike is brand new my friends so let's oh baby oh this is hard let's remove this break breaking arm and clean it and grease it it seems like this is some cheap stuff and it's made so that it wouldn't be removable and it's dry there on the pivot so what i'm gonna do i could use just the the oil I wanted to say oil oil, <laughs> chain oil, some chain loop, or maybe W40. This is Bruno. This is for for some parts on the suspension, but I I can also use it a little bit just there inside in order to minimize the friction. Just a little bit. Uh, don't apply it on the thread here. This this thread should even have the Loctite on it so the thread lock but here yes just a little bit like that and then we'll see how it works 
In this case, guys, uh, just additional advice. If you cannot disassemble the brakes, we could simply use the spray here and just put there a little bit more oil. After that, take a rag, clean it well from the outer side because you never want to have oil on the outer side, but I can feel much difference now. Trip number four, you want to open your brakes and check out your braking pads. Of course, they should not be worn, so they still should be good to go with some compound for the braking. But check out whether there are some particles of metal, sand, some little, little rocky thing in it. You will also hear that when you brake with the pad, which has, which is really dirty, you will hear that sound on your rim. This one is clean, which is no surprise because this is almost a new bike. And if there are some particles, you just take a screwdriver or something and remove those. If there is a lot of these inside, take some sandpaper and just try to clean the whole surface of the braking pad. You see, I just want to show you how the clean ones look like. Easier to ride than walk. <laughs> and then the fifth trick, of course you want to adjust the brakes. Like here you can see the right arm is moving, the left arm is moving, the right arm isn't moving. So I need to adjust that. Uh, but I want to show you some trick because adjustment is on another episode. Description once more. I want to show you one little trick which will show you whether the braking pads are positioned well. Use this barrel adjuster in order to push your braking pads against the rim and then you will see exactly what's happening without guessing. Now it's tight and now you can easily see whether these are in the right position or not. This should be moved a little bit, for example, like this, okay? You can also see the angle like this. New pads should just touch the rim. More info on the episode I've mentioned, but this is the trick that allows you to do it very, very quickly. All right, we have clean cables, clean housing. We've got the right length and routing of our housing. So it is the optimal way to route the cables to our brakes. Then we have clean pivots, greased pivots, and then the right position of our uh, braking pads, which are clean too. Now we are ready to perform the braking performance test once again and see the difference. If you don't feel much difference or, or, or still your brakes fail the test I'm showing you, that means you may try to replace the pads for some better, more expensive ones. Uh, it can change a little bit, but if they feel spongy, uh, at least replacing the housings and the cables will be needed or maybe even replacing the brakes. You need the safety, you need the braking performance. That's why I'm sharing with you these five tricks. Let me know how it turned out for you and see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Let's do this.